Today, I will be discussing this very cozy mystery. The Windsor Knot by Sophie Bennett was released in 2021, and I knew almost immediately that it would be my cup of tea. The sleuth is none other than Queen Elizabeth II, who, as you might be able to tell from this tin that I have beside me, is someone that I greatly admire. In this universe that Sophie Bennett has created, the queen is very talented as an amateur sleuth, but of course she has to be fairly secretive about these activities um, in order to not be seen to interfere with the official investigations that both Scotland Yard and MI5 are involved in um, around the cases that she is also working on behind the scenes. The queen employs the talents of her spectacular assistant private secretary, uh, Rosie, in order to obtain information that might be challenging for her to source herself, given that she is not only um, very scheduled, <laughs> but also constantly under the watchful eye of her beloved staff. Uh, the queen also has a very unique perspective, of course, given that she tends to see things that others might not due to the access that she has to various top secret files and, of course, events that she is able to organize. So all in all, it makes for a very intriguing premise. And um, having watched a really interesting um, interview that Sophie Bennett um, did recently with Murder by the Book on YouTube, which I'll link below, uh, one of the key themes that Sophie highlights is that uh, the novel really features women, including the queen, doing most of the actual work <laughs> where men, such as the lead investigators at Scotland Yard and MI5, are able to take quite a lot of the credit. And that is certainly a theme that we see running throughout this novel. In 2016, the Queen has hosted a dine and sleep. It's a very relaxing evening. Um, there are quite a few intellectuals. We learn that Prince Charles specifically requested that a few members of Russian society attend this particular event. And the Queen has obliged, always trying her best to support her family when she can. Unfortunately, however, one of the younger Russian members in attendance of this dine and sleep is found dead the next morning in his room. Initially, the thought, because he was, well, naked, <laughs> and let's just say in a very unique position, is that his death was accidental as a result of some form of pleasure-seeking activity. However, due to the particular knot that was used um, with respect to the rope <laughs> involved in this particular incident, it's quickly determined that that simply couldn't be the case and foul play is suspected. Now, unfortunately for the Queen, her staff members are the number one suspects of Scotland Yard and MI5. And unfortunately, that puts many of them under suspicion, which the Queen finds to be absolutely appalling. She knows her staff exceptionally well, and she very much values their loyalty and becomes concerned that if Scotland Yard and MI5 are not able to resolve the case very shortly, members of her staff could become disgruntled and feel as though they are not being adequately valued by the royal family, which is absolutely not the case. So this is really why the queen decides that she absolutely must become involved and uh, support her lead investigators at MI5 to solve the crime in record time. Now, she has to be quite creative, however, because she does not want to be seen to officially interfere. And unfortunately, as a result of perhaps her age and also the misconception among some of the lead investigators that she doesn't necessarily have a very observant eye for these sorts of things, uh, the Queen knows that she would not have much credibility if she was to try to officially interfere. So instead, she becomes quite creative. And we learn that actually for decades, she has really been relying 
drawing on the talents of her assistant private secretaries, all women, of course, to help her to uncover information that can help with these sorts of pesky problems that might emerge um, over her time and tenure as queen of the realm. At the moment, her assistant secretary's name is Rosie, and Rosie proves to be highly effective. She has military training, she's also an equestrian, and she really doesn't take any BS from anyone. So Rosie quickly emerges as just a fantastic sidekick uh, to the queen. She's really able to speak her mind, whereas of course, unfortunately, the queen is not, just given her particular status. It's great to see the dynamic between the two women evolve as the novel progresses and as they get closer and closer to determining who perpetrated the crime. I will also say that one of my favorite aspects of this book were the glimpses that Sophie Bennett provides into the royal family itself. Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip had such a special bond. Um, they first met when the Queen was only 13 years old and it really was love at first sight from her perspective. And so it is absolutely charming to really get to read some of the passages um, and exchanges between Philip and the Queen. I think Bennett does a great job of capturing what was Prince Philip's famous humor and candor. Um, and also you can see how he was able to really support Queen Elizabeth and provide her reassurance in a way that no one else was. And also just to be honest with her in a way that a lot of people um, struggle to do given that they are um, so in awe of her and um, her position. Um, so that was one of my favorite aspects of the book. I will also say that um, the actual mystery itself is incredibly satisfying. Um, I was really happy with the end result and found that Bennett did a great job weaving together different aspects of the storyline. I initially found it quite interesting that this novel was set in 2016, but having watched the Murder by the Book interview, I now understand that um, Sophie Bennett has always intended for this to be a four-part series. This novel takes place at Windsor Castle, which is largely recognized to be the castle that the Queen considers to be her home. And of course, during the pandemic, she did spend quite a bit of time at Windsor. Um, this is the second book which was just recently released and which I will be reading shortly, All the Queen's Men. My understanding is that this book takes place at Buckingham Palace, which is most likely the most famous of the Queen's residences. I'm very much looking forward to reading this book and reviewing it here on this channel. And of course, the next installments, I believe, are to take place at Sandringham and finally at Balmoral, which I can't wait um, to get my hands on um, because, again, it has been such a pleasure to read both of these books. And it just so happens that I also have a corgi in real life, and I have to say that the corgis always managed to steal the show with the Queen's little corgis Candy and Willow um, really doing their best and being very peevish when it came to um, poking the investigators who weren't exactly fans. <laughs> so if you are a fan of the Royals and if you are a fan of cozy British mysteries, I would absolutely encourage you to run to pick up a copy of The Windsor Knot and I will absolutely update you once I've read All the Queen's Men. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate your time and hope to see you again soon.